Well, thank you. It's uh, great to be back at OCP. Uh, my name is Ian Buck. I'm the v Vice President for Hyperscale and HPC Computing at NVIDIA. I get to work with some amazing companies building amazing infrastructure, uh, working on the future of AI. Uh, couldn't have a more exciting job. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about NVIDIA's contribution and participation in OCP and what, what we're announcing. Uh, you've already seen some of it. Uh, hopefully, I can shed a little bit more light and insight into what it is that we're all building as a community. NVIDIA is no um, stranger to OCP uh, in the combination of both NVIDIA and, of course, Mellanox, which is now part of the NVIDIA family. We've been contributing to OCP for quite some time. Uh, back in 2013, Mellanox contributed the original Switch X2 design to OCP to kick off and enable uh, networking at scale. In um, 2014, the first 40 gigabit OCP NIC, 40 gigabit, seems like a small number today, but uh, you know, it contributed in the beginning a, a path to 400 and now 800 gigabit networking. In 2015, uh, Facebook, now Meta, uh, released the Big Sur system with the Tesla M40. And this is back when we were still building PCIe cards for doing accelerated computing and AI. In 2017, Microsoft and NVIDIA announced Project Olympus um, to collaborate and bring the first HGX platform, the first platform that actually had NVLink and multi eight GPUs all operating as one. And that continued on further. Uh, today, and just last year, contributed our CX platform, the OCP NIC standard, uh, and of course, the Hopper HGX system with the Grand Teton system you just saw talked about. Meta's been a fabulous partner and continues to be, and will continue to bring GPUs to that platform, uh, and of course, many others. We're a founding member of SAI, and SAI, as you know, is the uh, switch abstraction interface. It's really critical to understand how the switches and how the networking is behaving, performing, and also provides a platform for all of the software innovation that has to happen at the switch layer. Uh, it, doing AI at scale is incredibly complicated. And these networks are operating at full 100% capacity all the time. And any traffic collision, any slowdowns, any uh, loss, link lossage means that entire data center could stall, literally stalling billions of dollars of infrastructure. Uh, having a good interconnect is critical, having the software and support. And it's exciting that OCP is investing in this area. And NVIDIA has been a strong supporter of SAI. I think we're the number two contributor and continue to, to meet here and, and advance its future. Moving forward, you know, what's next for computing? As you already saw, uh, AI is growing in scale. The complexity of these models are huge. And today, they don't fit on a single GPU. They don't barely even fit on eight GPUs. The future of AI is larger, more intelligent models that do reasoning, that are able to do math equations, that are able to understand our data, ask questions of our data, and intelligently be an assistant to understanding the future of enterprise workloads, social media, and, and how we interact with the, with the internet and with computers. With that, the complexity of AI infrastructure is growing. And what better place to be talking about that than here at OCP? Today's models that want to do mixture of experts, literally the largest GPT models today operate in the range of a trillion to 10 trillion parameters. To train those kinds of models and to do inference on those kinds of models, we just need to build bigger GPUs. Uh, and that's what our Blackwell platform, the NVL72, is about. It's about how can we get more than just eight, but actually 72 GPUs, latest GPUs, all talking and operating as one. Standard interconnects at data center scale are excellent, and they allow us to scale across. But within a rack, to do the expert parallelism and tensor parallelism that we need to operate on, we really need to get those GPUs talking even faster. Blackwell supports an 1,800 um, gigabits a second, gigabytes a second of bandwidth to each GPU. We've designed the GB200 MVL72 rack to actually be able to connect and have each GPU talk to every other GPU at that full 1,800 gigabyte a second bandwidth. To do that, you have to have a new kind of rack architecture, one that supports 72 GPUs, 130 terabytes a second of bandwidth within the rack. And if you can use the, the in-switch uh, computing prim primitives, you can do all reduces at twice that speed, or 260 terabytes a second of all reduced capability. 
That interfa interface, and, and you can see it on the show floor, has a, a whole new rack. In the back there, you can see the spine of all the NVLink connections uh, that connect to all those cables, connect to all those NVLink switches, and all those GPUs. So at OCP, we're, we've announced that we've actually made this rack architecture open. We are sharing um, all of the details in order to build this new kind of rack. It's be, uh, you just saw 140 kilowatt racks. Many of our partners are now bringing them live to production. With, it, with OCP, we shared how we added 100 pounds of steel rack reinforcements to support the 6,000 pounds of mating force in order to get the, all those GPUs connected to other, the back plane of the rack. We've added and shared the design for the blind mate, mate slide rails and floating blind mates. This simplifies install installation and maintenance. If you're going to deploy hundreds of thousands of these GPUs of these trays, servicing them has to be efficient, quick, and reliable. We've enhanced the bus bar. We have a, sending uh, 140 kilowatts or 120 kilowatts worth of power across the standard bus bar need, need to be upgraded, uh, cooled, and, and connected We've, and to support the 1,400 amps in order to drive this rack. We have four different NVLink cable cartridge designs in the back of this rack so that, that the different configurations of the NVL72 can be supported based upon the workloads and the deployment strategies that our partners want to make. And of course, we've added the modular compute tray design, the internals of, of the tray, as well as the uh, switch tray bus bar, the new NVLink switch that connects all the GPUs together. Here you can see a picture of one of the racks. On the top, you have all the compute trays. All the NVLink connections are in the back. And in the middle are actually nine NVLink switch trays that all of those GPUs connect to to provide the switching connectivity to provide that all to all, all, to all performance. It's a really exciting time for, uh, for infrastructure. And the reason why we're making this open is so that every one of our system partners and of course, our hyperscale partners, OEMs, system builders, and everyone out there can build upon this infrastructure and bring it to market, market quickly. This new kind of rack is uh, challenging to build, complicated, required years of R&D, working with our partners and at, at NVIDIA. And the only way we can accelerate AI is if we make it open. We provide access to this infrastructure so that every one of the, our, uh, the partners can then further take it and bring it to market with their tailored custom optimizations, they're working with their customers on how to manage serviceability, tailor the design for their particular AI workload, and of course, work within the power, cooling, and electrical constraints that their data center have versus others. Uh, it's an exciting time for everybody to be building new kinds of AI factories effectively, and this ecosystem makes that possible. And it really wouldn't have been possible without OCP communicating uh, information and, and the design across every one of you. We're really excited that now we, that Blackwell is finally in production. We have started our production silicon, so you can see there. This is uh, the uh, compute board of one GB200. Um, it has two Blackwell GPUs and a Grace CPU, all connected with NVLink. And on the top, there are the NVLink connectors that connect each. Uh, of course, there's 72 of those GPUs in the rack that get connected and uh, operate as one in this rack. Of course, it's not just about the rack. We have to scale this infrastructure out. Training these giant models, training models like GPT or, or the next generation Llama or across, uh, ha happen at data center scale. In fact, as you saw, not even in just one data center, but multiple data centers within a site. And there's even discussion of going multi-site uh, with very long throw at scale training. In addition, we have to do inference at scale, which often requires multiple GPUs to be working together. To do that, we need to advance the networking infrastructure in order to do that kind of training at scale. A single link flap, a single uh, conge a congestion point in the infrastructure these networks are running at 100%. Standard Ethernet was not designed to be running at 100% all the time. But that's what we do in AI. And when we have a potential for collision or traffic that can stop or pause a training job, the whole infrastructure goes idle. Literally a billion dollars worth of infrastructure, not computing. That's bad. 
In order to make that work, we have to make sure we have smart networking at scale that can manage both at the NIC and the switch, be talking to each other in proper sideband telemetry and doing adaptive congestion control in order to keep the network humming and avoid and doing the adaptive routing to avoid those collisions. On the left, we, have, we are contributing our Spectrum X, uh, X800 switch. This is our fourth generation Spectrum switch that has all the adaptive control. It can actually uh, sideband communicate with our CX NIC, which I have here on the right. That's the ConnectX NIC, our next generation NIC, which supports 800 gigabits of performance and supports PCI Gen 6. These two switches, the switch and the MIC, work together to do that adaptive control to keep the infrastructure humming. And we're excited that we're having customers now at 100,000 GPUs in a single data center, all training at scale using this, this technology. Finally, um, the infrastructure doesn't just stop at the rack or the networking, but we really now are building AI factories, factories that need cooling. They need new kinds of electrical capabilities, new kinds of designs holistically. And there's a new ecosystem of, of partners emerging that are meeting that challenge for the cooling, uh, the electrical, and the design of these data centers. We've been working with Vertiv, and they've been announcing uh, today that they're providing a new uh, GB200 NVL72 reference architecture from their components. They provide the, the cooling and a blueprint for cooling, electrical, and data center setup. As a result of this reference architecture, they can reduce the time to, to build by 50%, reduce the space and power management by 40%, and optimize the annual cooling and energy consumption by 20%. Building this kind of data center is going to require all of us working together to make this happen. At the node and GPU level, the rack scale, the switch scale, and at the entire data center scale to build these kinds of next generation data centers. All of these partners are here. We're excited to actually be, be working with them. On the left, we have all of the uh, OEM and device manufacturers. Many of them have this in their booth, so you can go check it out. I encourage you to look at the complexity just of the NV, NVLink spine, uh, a, a really a work of art to have that much bandwidth all happening in a single rack. We're working across the entire ecosystem, all the way down to the individual component uh, level, all the way up to the data center scale and data center integrator level to make the next generation of AI infrastructure possible. It's all happening here at OCP. There's many conversation work groups, many of are already involved. I'm appreciative of the choir, but I want to thank everyone for your support in helping making all of this, this AI journey possible and working with NVIDIA. Thank you again. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and I'll see you in the meetings.